Tool four is on tangent vectors. So tangent vectors, vectors that are tangent to a curve. And normal vectors. So normal, normal vectors. So normal vector would be a vector that is normal to a curve. In other words, um, well, what, what does normal mean? Normal to a curve? Per perpendicular, yeah, so perpendicular, yep. Yep, it's pretty cool stuff. We're actually gonna be doing like some higher level calculus. So it's kinda, it's kinda nice, it's kinda fun. I like it, I like it. So first, let me define what's called the unit tangent vector. So let's talk about that. So unit tangent vector, vector. So the unit tangent vector. This one's on your formula sheet too, but I'll, I'll go ahead and write it out um, so you have it. So let's see. So C here will be a smooth curve. That means it has no sharp edges or anything like that. Hey, all right, hey, yeah. hey, I forgot you're in the class. Let's C be a smooth, I saw you earlier in that room in the math thing. Oh, you saw Yeah, but I didn't want to say hi, because I don't know, I just, so, I, I don't know, it's just weird. I didn't want to like, I just, no, I wasn't, I just, <laughs> I was like, oh, and I saw you in there with Michelle, but I didn't, I didn't, I don't know. All right, so let's C be a smooth curve. That means it has no jagged or sharp edges. Uh, represented, represented by, uh, by a vector valued function by r of t on some interval i. So on some interval i. I'm writing a lot, just trying to be really perfect. Um, actually, I should have just written r without the t, uh, but that, that's fine, be a little bit different. So C is a smooth curve and it's given by R of T. So remember R of T is a vector valued function. So uh, you can think of the graph as the collection of the endpoints of the vectors, right? Like last time. So what we're defining is called the unit tangent vector. So the unit tangent vector, okay? The, the unit tangent vector, and we're gonna give it a name. We're gonna call it big T of T, big T of T at t is, and I'll write it up here, it's big T of t, and it's basically, you, you take your, your r, and then you take the derivative of r, and then you normalize it. So what that means is you make it a unit vector, so you divide by its magnitude. So it's the normalized derivative. If you remember from last time, I don't know if you remember, when r was your position, what was the derivative? Do you remember? What was the derivative of position? Velocity. So this is the velocity vector and it's been normalized. So you've taken your velocity vector and you've turned it into a unit vector. Do you remember what a unit vector is? It has, it has length what? One. One. Good, out of the one. One, absolutely. So this is, we've taken our velocity vector and we've made it a unit vector. So. The unit tangent vector is the normalized velocity vector. That sounds really fancy. So if someone on the street says, hey, what's a unit tangent vector? You'd be like, oh, it's a normalized velocity vector. You know, you just give them a look. Um, but they won't ask you that, so, but yeah. <laughs> um, note, uh, and then all of this, the derivative is not equal to the zero vector. This is a subtle point. The reason this is true is because C is smooth. I think we talked about smooth curves, uh, I think that might have been last time. And so remember, it's smooth if the derivative is not equal to zero. So that's why this is defined because it's a smooth curve. Because if it's equal to zero, then it's undefined. So subtle, subtle point, subtle point, subtle point. My notes say uh, do homework, but I'm gonna skip that. I'm just gonna go on now and define this and explain what both of them mean graphically and then we'll do homework. So just an observation, so note, So note, if you, if you do t of t, if you do t of t dot t of t, so if you dot t with itself, by the way, I didn't put an arrow above the t because I'm lazy, so uh, technically there's supposed to be an arrow above it, but I'm being abusive. So if you dot something with itself, um, there's a formula. This says this is the magnitude squared. I don't know if you've ever seen this before. We probably did it at some point maybe at the beginning of class, um, like the beginning of the semester, you maybe you might recall it's v dot v is equal to the magnitude of v squared. It's, it's just some random formula from the beginning of the semester. It was probably in the book, or maybe I wrote it on the board. It comes up. 
<clears throat> so if you dot it with itself, you get that. That's just because it's a vector. That's, this is always true. What's the magnitude of t? Anyone know? What should it be? Because t is a unit vector, so what should its magnitude be? One. One. So this is one squared. Right, because it's a unit vector. Hey, Dane! All right! So it's one, and one squared is just one. So t of t dot t of t is constant. So when you dot t with itself, you get a constant. You might say, why does this matter? This was a random, we proved this last time. Oh, we did. We proved that if this was constant, I, you probably don't remember, but then if you take t and you dot it with what? Anyone remember? Dot it with the, no one knows. Derivative, oh my god, you remember extra credit. No, I'm kidding, yes. You get zero, you get zero. So we proved this. We proved that this was true for general vectors. If you take a vector and you dot it with itself and you get a constant, then whenever you dot it with its derivative, you get zero. We proved algebraically why this works. What does it mean when you take the dot product of two vectors and you get zero? What does it mean about those vectors? What does it mean? They're orthogonal. Yeah, or perpendicular. So yeah, they're orthogonal. I swallow when I say it. So this means <laughs> t of t is orthogonal, that's the orthogonality symbol, that's why I use that word, to its derivative. So the unit tangent vector is perpendicular to the derivative of, of the unit tangent vector. So what do we do? So now we have a vector that's perpendicular to the unit tangent vector. So what we're going to do now is we're going to normalize this vector. So let's, so let's, so let us, let's be fancy, normalize t prime of t. So let's do that now. I'm gonna, we're going to normalize it now. So when we normalize t prime of t, I'll come to this board over here, I'll do it. When we normalize it, we're going to get a new construction, a new creation. I'll just do it here. I can squeeze it in here. It's called, it's called the normal vector. In this case, we're going to call it the principal, has this funny word, principal unit normal vector. So if we normalize this, we get the principal unit normal vector. We're going to call that big N of t. And this is going to be t prime, and then divided by the magnitude of t prime. Remember, when we do this, when we divide by the magnitude, we turn it into a unit vector. Remember that from the first test? The question is, how do you find a unit vector? Like, find a unit vector in the direction of blah. So you took your vectoring divided by the magnitude. So this is going to be our principal unit normal vector. So these are the two formulas that you need, and you'll have them on your formula sheet. Let me, uh, let me explain graphically what this means. I'll give you a minute to catch up, and then we're done. Then we're just going to do homework problems. These problems can be very nasty, in particular this one. Um, there's just a lot of algebra here, right? There's a lot of really messy problems. So um, a lot of quotient rules. It can get really out of hand really quickly. That's why there's so few homework problems. I made sure for the most part that we could do most of them. Some, I'll just give you the answer, or we'll, we'll talk about them. But most of them we can do by hand. Like they're not com computationally impossible. Like they get out of control. Like it, get, it gets completely out of control. If you just make these up, game over. Like you get stuff you can't even, it's just, humans don't do it. Yeah, yeah, just, this is not even right. So let me give you a picture so you see what all this means. So here's the, here's the idea behind these two concepts. So you see how it applies. So this is the I, idea idea. So we have a curve like this. And so if I pick a point here, this is maybe this is maybe t of t. t of t. That's the that's the tangent vector. It's the velocity vector that's been that's been normalized. And then this here would be n of t. Okay? It's perpendicular to t of t. See that? So uh, t of t, t prime uh, sorry, t yeah, t of t. This points in the direction the object is moving. So it points in the direction, points in the direction, I'll use bad English, object, points in direction, or oh, in the direction, object, is moving. So it always points in the direction, so, it's going, so the object is moving that way. It's a velocity vector, right? It's a normalized velocity vector. And then n of t, 
uh, it's always perpendicular and it points towards it always points towards this piece towards like I guess you call it the concave side so it points towards concave side always points towards concave side uh, and it points in the direction the object is turning so it points in the direction the object is turning it says that in my notes so if you have it like this it'll do it'll do that so it points towards the concave side it's kind of cool kind of cool we're gonna we're gonna spend more time on this in the next section we're gonna talk about how sharp a curve bends and stuff like that that's that's really cool talk about curvature it's the next section so it builds on this this is like a, a I don't know what the word is. Preview, prelude to, to that. Is that the right word? Prelude. Yeah, it's also a car that they don't make anymore. So, right, Honda Prelude. Do you want to? Yeah. Okay. As, and I always wanted one, but it's gone. So, tangent, normal. Tangent, normal. All right. So let's let's do some problems. So all the homework questions. Yeah. Yes. You said. Come on. <laughs> yes. You said the normal vector points towards the concave side. What about the point where, well, like the acceleration or whatever would be zero and where? There is no concavity. Like, well, I guess. Oh, I guess it would be zero then. I guess, right? I mean, I don't know. 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 I know. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. It's like here. You mean like where the concavity changes? Where does it point? Is it maybe just a zero vector? It's pretty deep. I don't have to look into that. Would it be? Would it be zero? I don't know. <laughs> you just broke calculus. No, I don't know. <laughs> Probably. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it could be zero at some points. I guess. Mm -hmm. What's that? Broke calculus. I didn't think that was possible. No, yeah, it's already broken. No, I'm kidding. No, <laughs> some people think it is. Sometimes I hear people say that. So, all right, let's let's do some problems. Um, let's do uh, some homework. Uh, so let's see. This is calculus three. Maybe we should start off with this is twelve four. See so how many homework questions there are. Moment of truth. Eight. There's only eight homework problems. Wow. Well, that's really good, isn't it? I mean, I'm, I'm happy. I'm very happy about that. Maybe we should do number one. Like, I, I don't know. Like, why not? I mean, it might, it might be too easy, but who cares, right? I mean, nothing is wrong with easy math. Can I erase this? Yeah, okay, it's gone. All right, number one. Anyone have the homework up? Anyone have it up besides Rafael? Do you have it up, Rafael? Yes. Yes, good, good, good. So number one. So I know it's R of T equals, I, I guess I can see it. T cubed i hat. T cubed i hat. Sorry, it takes forever. That's okay. No, that's all right. I, I can barely. I can see it. Seven t squared j hat. T equals five. T equals five. Yeah. And they want the tangent vector. They want the uh, tangent of five. Yes. Tangent. Oh, okay. Is it fill in the blank? Okay. Okay. It says thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Like this. Hey. Hey. Hey, John D. So they want this. So fill in the blank. Fill in the blank. Beautiful. Okay. So solution. So they want us to fill in this blank. So I guess we have to use this formula here. Oh, they're still on the board. How convenient. Right? So, so basically we have to uh, take the derivative of r and divide by the magnitude. And then we just plug in 5 and we're good to go. Right? That's all we got to do. So yeah, it's not so bad. So r prime, we already have r, so r prime. So taking the derivative here, the i hat just hangs out, right? So the derivative of, of t cubed would be um, 3t squared, right? 3t squared, 3t squared, i hat. I haven't done this since last year, so I haven't even haven't done any of the problems. Um, plus 14t j hat. So plus 14t j hat. So taking the derivative. It's probably really important to mention this. So at this point. We could compute the bottom. We could do this, but we're done with this. Like this is the end result. All we have to do is plug five into this formula. So we could plug the five in now, or we could plug it in later. Okay, it's up to you. Uh, but we're at a point where we can plug in the five. It doesn't really matter if we plug it in now or plug it in later. Um, what do you all want to do? You want to plug it in now? Plug it in now? I think that's a smart choice. I think you should always plug it in as soon as you can. I think that might be a good idea. Yeah, good. So it'd be 3 times 5 squared i hat plus 14 times 5 j hat. And again, the reason we can plug in the 5 is because we're done at this step. Right? If we had to compute this, Right, if, we if we were doing this instead, we would not plug in the 5 yet because we would have to differentiate t prime 
right? So we would, we would have to wait. So that, that makes it harder. I mean, that, that's way harder. All right, so this is going to be, I'm gonna write this in component form. This is 75, because it's three times 25. And 14 times five is, is 70. 70. Thank you, I almost messed up. I was gonna say 90, thank you. Good, good save. Good save, thank you. Get some soda. So that's gonna go here. So now we have to divide by the magnitude of this thing. So let's find the magnitude. So the magnitude of r prime of five. Notation is really important. So take your time on the test and make sure all the symbols are correct. Yeah, I mean, I check for stuff like that. I mean, I'm supposed to, right? Like I'm supposed to grade your test. So I look for mistakes. So you know, it's common for people to make little errors. So this is gonna be the square root. Then you just square these things. Now don't worry about like simplifying your answer here. You can give me a crazy square root, I'm, I'm okay with it. Um, I mean, there's ridiculous answers. Uh, the homework will take the ridiculous answer also. I've checked, and we'll check today. So yeah, I got 10,525. So that's the square root of 10,525. Anyone know what that is? I don't either, okay, so, no, so, so that's that. So then t prime of five would just be this divided by this, okay? So you could just divide each piece by this piece, okay? So um, I'll write it like this, angle bracket 75 over this. So one, zero, five, two, five, and then 70, and then this. Isn't that 519 Yeah, okay. Is that, is that a mistake? Yeah. Yeah, okay, all right, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, who got that? Who, who was that? So, okay, thanks. <laughs> Brendan, to you, right? You told him, right, Brendan? Did you? Yeah. Did you? Was it you who helped him? Or? I asked him. I find a whole class, whole class, it's yeah. fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. You might need it, so it doesn't matter. So, it's, so. <laughs> Over there. So that's it. Thank you. Yeah, why did I put C prime? It's just T. It's just T. Right? Because it's this. That's it. That's it. Someone should type it in um, to see if it's uh, to see if it's correct. Uh, but that would be the unit tangent vector at five. So if you took the magnitude of this, you should get one. Right? You should get one. Because it's a unit vector. It's a unit vector. So any questions on that one? So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Just plugging in the numbers. Um, yeah, but I won't mess up again, so, no, yeah, that's it, no, not, not going to happen. <clears throat> All right, let's try another one, let's try another one, let's do something harder. So that was number one, oh, wow, wow, what happened here? Oh, no, that's easy, let's do it. Yeah, let's do number two, let's do it, let's do it, why not? All right, we got time, we, we should do it, we should do it, number two. So it's R of T. Equals seven cosine of t. Oh, it's a seven? Seven. Oh! I have? Well, I have plus seven sine t. J hat. T equals pi over six. Okay. And it wants the, it wants the same thing? Yep, same thing. Okay. Same thing. Yeah. Is it formed oh, with the parentheses in front of the i hats and the j hats? Is it, is it what? Is it formed? Do you have to do it? No. No, I just like doing it because it bothers me. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to. Mm -hmm. I don't think they do in the homework. I don't think, yeah, I, yeah, mm -hmm. they don't. A lot of times people, you know how when you have like f of x, people put the parentheses. In higher level math, when you're dealing with linear transformations, people will do this. They won't even put the parentheses anymore. It's so bad, I know, it's just, I know. But it's just customary. Yeah, it's one of those moments of, yeah. Okay, solution. So I guess we'll have to start by taking the derivative of this thing. So let's do it. So r prime of t. What's the derivative of cosine? Is it sine or is it negative sine? Negative sine. Negative sine. Good. I'm going to go ahead and put it in component form just because it feels more comfortable. So angle bracket, negative 7 sine t. Going really slow. No more mistakes. And then the derivative of sine is it cosine or is it negative cosine? Cosine. 
Cosine, yep, seven cosine. This is a good one for the test. I mean, they're all good ones for the test, right? They're all, they all are. There's only eight of them. There's only eight problems. Well, I don't know about all of them. Well, from this section, yeah, they're all, they're all good. Next section, there's some that are just too hard. Like, they're ridiculous. You can't even, like, yeah. So I, I guess now we can plug in the number. However, uh, I think it might be instructive to just find the magnitude because something beautiful is going to happen because of the cosine and the sine. So, so watch this. So when we take the magnitude, we get the square root, and we square each of the components. Right, so we square this one. So we get negative 7 sine t squared plus 7 cosine t squared. Luigi's not here today. Do you know if he's coming today? Or? Oh, no. It's a bad day to miss. Today's a little, it's harder today. Today's the hardest day. Um, square this one, you get 49. Oh, I see, said the blind man. Plus 49 cosine squared t. Oh, hey, hey. What can you pull out here? The 49. You get sine squared plus cosine squared. Uh, <laughs> yeah, isn't that beautiful? I know, it's so cool. It's such a pretty thing. So it's seven. What's this gonna be? One. one. It's rigged, that's why it's such a great test question. So you get seven. That would be a great test question. It is, isn't it? I think so too, Rafael, it's awesome. And the next section when it happens, is like, oh, because the next section's worse. Um, well, even in this section, when we're computing the big N, it's game over. So that's, that's the magnitude of our R, of our R, okay? So now I guess we have to um, <coughs> compute T. I'm gonna plug the pi over six in at the very end. So T of T is gonna be R prime of T divided by the magnitude of R prime of T. This notation is ridiculous. It's a lot of strokes, right? It's like. Uh, 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 I mean, that's like, it's a lot of notation. And it, and it gets worse, right, as we go further in the course. I mean, that's bar, bar, r, arrow, prime. I mean, it's like a lot. This is equal to, um, I'm going to put the top piece, well, we can just go straight to it, right? We're taking, we're basically taking this and dividing it by what, in this case? By seven. Yeah, by seven, right? Because the magnitude is seven. So it's just going to be cosine t. comma, sine t. Again, writing it in, in component form. In component form. What, what, what? No, no. Oh, no! No! What did I do? No, it's so bad! I knew I saw the look on Kamal's face and I knew something was wrong. No, what did I do wrong? Did you all see what I did? <laughs> two, two mistakes. Thank you. Negative sign. No, no, it's one mistake. That that counts. Two yeah, but I but it's what's the same mistake though. You can't. Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, you don't need them. So, all right. So now, what do we plug in now to finish? Pi over six. <laughs> so plug in pi over six. So you have negative sine pi over six, thank you. And then cosine pi over six. And then, um, anyone know what the sine of pi over six is? One half, one half, yeah, one half. So negative one half. Sine of pi over three is square root of three over two. Right. So, and then this one would be, what would this one be? Square. Square root over three over two. Yeah. And that would be it. Right? That would be the answer. That's it. That's it. I should have erased as soon as I saw the look on your face. I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah. So what happened to the magnitude? Oh, okay. Good question. So basically, we took this and we divided it by seven because the magnitude is seven. You see it? Yeah. Good. 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 Good question. Good. Good, John. Yeah. Any questions on this one? Any questions on this one? So not so bad. All right. All right. Let's do another one. Let me see if I can find something a little bit more challenging. Um, so that was number two. Wow. Three. Three is a little bit harder. 
Um, do you want to try it? Want to do number three? Let's do it. So number three. Number three. Do as many examples as, as we can. So number three. So three is r of t. So we have r of t, and it's equal to. Um, seven t. Oh, thank you. Seven t. I hat. Oh wow, ln. And what's T? E. e. And it wants T of E? Yeah. Okay. So find T of E. Find T of E. So same, same idea. Same idea. Alright, so solution. I think the answer here might be a little bit messier than the other ones. So we will find out. The T ones aren't too bad though because you can always just take the derivative and plug in the number. Right? So that's not the case with the n ones because that requires another derivative, which we'll see shortly. So let's try it. So r prime. So the derivative of 7t is 7. <laughs> what? 7? I'm not going to mess up. <laughs> What's the derivative of ln t? One over t, good, Brianna. No, 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 no. I, I don't know. Sorry. No, wait. No, no. I remember your name. No. Tori. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. You don't need it. You already got four points today. It's all right. I haven't made the test yet, so. Yeah. I'd rather you make the test easier and then less extra credit points. By the way. Really. Really? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so, so, um, so we have so we're here. Um, I guess we can find the magnitude now. But what? Hey, Luigi, you made it. Um, it might be easier to do what with the e. Just go ahead and plug it in. Let's just go ahead and do that. I'm just feeling like we should do that. So r prime of e is uh, seven i hat minus. 1 over e j hat. I didn't do it this way in my notes. In my notes, I did something ridiculous. Like, yeah, I don't know what I was doing. It's just completely insane. I waited until the end to, to do it. I'm going to put this in component form just because it makes it look a little bit better, OK? Um, so in component form, this would be 7 comma what would be the second component in this case? Negative 1 over E. Negative 1 over E. <laughs> one over e. That would be the second, uh, second component. <laughs> and my notes are really weird. Yeah, wow. Looks really hard in my notes. Doesn't look like this. OK, so now we can take the magnitude of this. So bar, bar, r prime of E. And then so we're just going to square this and square this. Right? And then take the square root. So it would be the square root. So 7 squared plus negative 1 over e squared. <laughs> 7 squared is 49. Right? Got this. 49 plus 1 over e squared. That looks really ridiculous, right? I suppose we could clean this up. It might be a good idea to do that. I think we should. This is calculus three. Let's, let's clean it up a little bit. So what we can do to clean this up is use some skill. Um, so what's that skill going to be? I guess we can write this as 49e squared over e squared like this. 49e squared over e squared plus 1 over e squared. We could do that, right? Because now this is square root of 49 e squared plus 1 over e squared. This makes it look a lot better. What's going to happen is the reason I'm doing this is because we have to divide by this. And I see this, this fraction here, and it's uncomfortable. So by doing this, it's going to make our answer look a lot better. Okay. So this is going to be erasers. This is going to be um, 49 e squared plus 1, and then we're just going to get an e here. Okay, so this, this is the, I'm going to write it again up here, this is the magnitude of r prime of e. So r prime at e. Why is it over e? Because the square root of e squared is e. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Let me pause here. So it's some funky algebra, just to make it a little, it's worse in my notes. In my notes, again, I, I didn't plug in the number here and it made it harder. So it's always good to plug it in as soon as you can, okay, as soon as you can. So the formula we're using, I'll write it down, because Luigi and some of the people weren't here, is this one. The question is to find t of t, which is r prime of t divided by the magnitude of r prime of t. This is called the a unit tangent vector. I'll pass up the formula sheet in a minute. So step one was to find the derivative. And then we have to find it at e. See, t of e. So, so basically, you find the derivative, plug in the e, then take the magnitude. So now we're going to divide. Okay, we're going to divide. So now we have, finally, let's make it seem long and dramatic. Finally, you don't have to write finally, but it's fun. Finally, just, just make it seem good. t of e is r prime of e. I'll write all the notation out, the painful, painful notation. Magnitude r prime of e. You don't have to put the arrows, by the way, on stuff like this. I'll know, because you can be like, oh, it's bold. So then we're taking this, and we're dividing by this. So I'm going to put this on the outside like this. Oh, when you divide by this, you really multiply by the what? By the reciprocal. reciprocal. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. E over square root 49e squared plus 1 times the vector 7, negative 1 over e. Right, so that, this is this, and then this is, is the top piece. You see it? And that's that. Look what happens with the e's in the second term. They're going to cancel, right? That's why I did that, because I saw that. I was like, oh, I should clean up. Right? I saw, that's why I did this. I, I saw the E. I'm like, oh, that's just ugly. Like, we can't leave it like that. That's just not human. I mean, it is, but it's, it's weird. So this is equal to angle bracket 7E over square root 49E squared plus 1. And then we have uh, negative 1 over square root 49E squared plus 1. And that would be the final answer. So I like this problem. It's a little bit harder. Although, it can be problematic on a test. Like, what happens if you don't do this? Like, what do I do, right? I don't know. Then I have to make a decision. I don't want to have to make that decision. So. <laughs> like, you could just say, huh? divide everything like that and no simplification. Yeah, I know. But, I mean, yeah, but where do you draw the line, though, right? Like, what if someone leaves their answer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what if you don't realize in the test that it's something like that and you don't simplify it? And yeah, but that's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's, that probably won't be on the test. So. Woo, it's getting harder now. Number four. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. What is going on here? Oh, wow. Oh, we should probably do number four. That's ridiculous. So any, uh, any questions on three? Any questions on three? So four, we have to find the equation of a tangent line. Yeah, I think. Yeah, find, find a set of parametric equations for the tangent line. Let's do that. Number, number four. Number four. Number four. So we want the parametric equations for the tangent line. So a tangent line. Yeah, both. Yep. So this is a great test question. On a test, this would be two parts. So so I'll show you the parts. So r of t here is t squared i hat plus t j hat. Sixteen over three. Oh, there's no, there's no t. Okay. And what did they give you? Anything else? Uh, three, and then they gave parentheses. Sixteen four, sixteen. So they're really nice because they have you find t of four first. I'm guessing. Yeah. I'm guessing. Okay. Yeah. So they're being nice. First, they have you find t of four, and they want the tangent line. So I suppose that. Just to be consistent on an exam, I would have to do that as well. So find t of 4. And then b, tangent line at 16, 4, 63. So we'll, 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 ha we'll have to find the parametric equations for the tangent line. The reason they're being nice is because they're telling you this. They didn't have to do that in this problem. In theory, you can figure out 4 by using matching, which we'll have to do in the next section, it'll, so it'll come up on the test. Uh, 
let me, let me explain that before I do the problem. So you can get this, you can get the four from this, because look, this has to be equal to this, so t squared has to be equal to 16. You see that? So t is probably four. And then look, oh, t is four. And then 16 over 3, so it matches. So when t is 4, when t is 4, you get this, right? You get this. So you could kind of figure that out from this. So that happens in the next section. They won't give you this, and they'll give you this, and you'll have to do something. Something else, not this, but... Anyways, so let's go ahead and uh, work, work through this one. So solution. Let's do part A first. So to do part A, we just have to find this, this unit tangent vector at, at 4. So same thing, we start by taking... Um, the derivative, so r prime of 4, oh, of t, of t, can't do it all at once, take the derivative and plug in 4, and yeah, no, no thanks. So this is 2t i hat, and then the derivative of t, what's the derivative of t? 1, yeah. So I'm going to write 1 j hat, I'll even put like a fancy 1. What's the derivative of 16 thirds? Zero. Zero. I'm going to put it there, okay, because I like writing it. Okay. I'm going to put it in component form, just for clarity. So this is going to be angle bracket 2t, 1, 0. It's really better to put it in component form. Yes. Is there a t in the? There's a t here. 2t, 1, 0. Good. Mm -hmm. You see it? Yeah. Okay. So now we have to plug in the 4. So let's go ahead and do that. So r prime of 4. Plugging in the 4. So plugging in the 4 here. So it would be 2 times 4. So it would be um, 8, 1, and 0. So that would be r prime of 4. What do we do next to find the unit tangent vector? What's the next step? What do we find? The magnitude. The magnitude. Good. The magnitude. Now we just find the magnitude. Good. Good. So we do r prime of 4. Magnitude. So square root. I'll even write it all out. 8 squared plus 1 squared plus 0 squared. It'd be ridiculous. Why not? Square to 65, yeah, square to 65, beautiful. You square each of the components, take the square root, square to 65, awesome. This is a really nice, uh, t you, you would, for sure, will have one like this on your test always, every semester, without fail. Uh, it's not hard, right? You just basically take the derivative, plug in the numbers, now we, now we can form t. So the unit tangent vector at four, it's basically going to be this, and we're going to take each of these components, and what are we, what are we going to divide each of these by in this case? Square root of 65. Good. That means you get it. Good. Super important. So, so important. Um, so this is going to be 8 over square root 65, and then 1 over square root 65. Good. And then the last one is just 0. Yeah. I was thinking your test is next time. You know, try to get 100 on the test. Um, uh, uh, it's very possible, right? I mean, the, hmm? Uh, minus one or two. That's a common mistake, actually. Yes. Uh, so here's the thing. Let's say, Kamal, let's say you do this, Kamal. Then I have to take a point off because you forgot the zero. But if you just use i hat and j hat and you don't put the k hat, I can't assume that you don't know, so I have to mark it right. <coughs> so, so, so if you use, so if you do, if you do the i hat and the j hat, like if you do this. So if you don't write it in component form. Right, if you write it like this and you don't put the OK, I'll have to mark it right. It's better to do this, but no one does it. I like doing it because I like OK, but um, I think this is more clear. So, yeah, OK. So that's, that's that one, that's that one. This is, this is the tangent vector, right? This, this is the tangent vector. So we're looking for the equation of the tangent line. So if you think about the graph, I, I don't know what the graph is. Let's say we have a graph, and we're looking for the tangent line. Right, we're looking for this tangent line. Well, this 
this little fat vector here, that will be t of 4. So t of 4 is on the line. In particular, it's parallel to our line. So it's our parallel vector. So this is our a, this is our b, and this is our c. These are, do you remember what these are called? The ABC direction, direction numbers, direction numbers. And this is your direction vector. Yeah, hey! Direction vector. So, so solution to B. Solution to B. So I'll write the formula down in case you forgot. So it's X equals, X equals, I forgot if I used X1 or X0. Let me look at my notes. I used, I used X0 before, so X0 plus AT. Y equals, remember this, first test, Y0 plus BT. And Z equals Z0 plus CT. Remember that from, from somewhere? Can you hear me? No? <laughs> I'm listening to the music. Is it rap music? I'm just, I'm just picking. Okay, I don't know. I just I wanted to say that. Okay. All right. So. Huh? It's called what? I'm still learning. I finished the problem. Oh, you finished the problem already? You're that quick? Oh, you're so good. Okay. Ah, just, ah. Okay. So, so, oh, oh, these, these are these, right? That's this number here. So x0, y0, z0. All right, what's another way to say this? Instead of x sub 0, how do you say it? x? x0. That's how physics people say it. x0. Yeah, physics people, you have to yell, though. Okay, so x0. So x equals 16 uh, plus 8 over square root 65t. And then y would be um, 4 plus 1 over square root 65t. And then z, oh, z is just 16 thirds, right? Because the, the c is 0. Random conceptual question. Would it be possible to find symmetric equations in this case? Oh, no. <laughs> Why? Yeah, because there's a zero. Remember, you got to solve for t. It's impossible. Because remember, the symmetric equations are like this. Remember that from the first test? And then so c is zero, so you can't find them. So that's why it doesn't ask for them in the homework. Maybe. I don't know. That's why. I don't know what their intentions were, but you can't, you can't find them. Yeah. Good. Good. All right, so that was that one. Any questions on, on this stuff? We should, we should move on to number seven, maybe. Uh, so I'm skipping some because I want to do something easy. And I think seven, wow, I didn't even do it right on my notes. Must be fun. We should do it. Seven uh, is probably the easiest one we can do. So, so any questions on this stuff? On this stuff? All right, seven, it gets a little bit harder. So seven, we're going to find um, the, the principal unit normal vector. So we're going to find n of t. We're going to find n of t. And they give us, this is nice, they give us a trig one. Trig ones are the best ones because they work out really nice. So we have pi cosine t, cosine t minus <coughs> plus pi sine t j, and t is pi over 6. Pi over 6? Okay, pi over 6. Yeah, t is pi over 6. These are a little bit harder because um, we can't just plug in the number right away. We're going to have to take a derivative. This one, though, is the easiest one in the homework because it has sine and cosine. So it should be pretty good. Let me refresh your memory on what everything is here. So, so t of t is r prime over the magnitude of r prime. I'm not, I'm not going to put the, the arrows. And then n of t is t prime over the magnitude of t prime. So this is our goal. Right? This is our goal. We're looking for that. We're looking for that monster. So solution. So we'll start by taking the derivative in this case. So let's do it. So r prime of t. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Yep. So, um, you know, I'm going to put it in component form again because I just feel like more comfortable with that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's better, isn't it? Like, I just, I don't like the I hats and J hats. I and mean, they're all right. They have a purpose, but not today. And then this would be pi 
cosine t. Should you plug in right away? No. And we'll talk about why you can't. Okay. Yeah, good question. The reason we can't plug stuff in now is because, um, so the reason we can't plug stuff in now is because we have to take the derivative of t. You see? And so we have to create t first. Oh, okay. Yep. So we have to wait. So it's like going a step further. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's much worse. So normally we would plug the number in if we were looking for, for, t, for t, but we're looking for n. So we have to first form t, then take the derivative, then plug it in. So this one's rigged, though. This one's rigged. That's why I picked this one as the first example. Got to warm up. So now we take the magnitude of this. So the magnitude of r prime. So this is the square root. And we just square each of the components. So you square this one, and then you, and you square this one. So it'd be negative pi sine t squared plus pi cosine t squared. Yep. This is a really good test question, by the way, because you could do it. Like, it's clean compared to the one we'll do after this. It's like, do you know how to do some stuff? And it's not, it's not too bad. The pi squared here, we can pull that out. I'm going to show extra steps. This is pi squared, parentheses, sine squared t, plus cosine squared t, like that. And then what does the sine squared plus cosine squared become? One. one. So the square root of pi, so we just get pi. Or we just get pi. It's really pretty, right? It's just, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah pi. Pi is that amazing number, right? That if you take a circle and you measure the distance around the circle and you divide by the diameter, you get pi. Yeah. Yeah. Take a string, right? If you take a string and you measure this and you divide by this, you get pi. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. I learned, I learned that on the internet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this guy in this chat room told me. Um, that's true. So he's really smart. So then here we have pi. So now let's find t. So t t of t. So we take this and divide it by pi. Okay. So I'm going to skip a step here. I'm just going to do it. So we're going to divide each of these components by pi. So it'll just be negative sine t and then cosine t. Let me pause here. Let you catch up. That's pretty delicate. Everyone okay with how I got this? Just divided this by by pi. Makes sense, William? You're not even like that's great. Like, <laughs> did you ever take calculus three? I didn't take calculus three. Oh, you didn't? Does this make sense? Oh, so good. Oh, so good. He's not in the class, but he's he's a doctor. Sorry, but oh, he is. He is. Oh, sorry. So it's good. If you have an emergency, like, is there a doctor in the house? No, so. <laughs> so now we have t. So we have t. So we have to find t prime. Right, because we have to form this beast. So, so t prime, negative cosine. Good, Rafael. Negative cosine, negative sine. I remember grading this last semester. I remember grading this on the test. So many people, like they were like, "Oh, this is easy," and they rushed through it and they messed up the signs. Be really careful. Right, take your time. So the derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So they're both negative. And now we have to divide by the magnitude. So let's find the magnitude of t prime. Oh, but that's easy. Yeah. That's just going to be 1, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, I'll show the step, but so it's this squared plus this squared. That's just 1. That's just 1. I had a good marker. It's gone. I don't know what happened to it. Oh, maybe it's this one. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. That's the one. That's the one that has it. All right. So, so this is one. So finally, so finally, n of t is t prime divided by the magnitude of t prime. But t prime is just this. And the magnitude of t prime is just one. So it's just going to be the same thing. It's just going to be this. Right? It's just going to be negative cosine t, negative sine t. Let me explain that again. So basically, we, just, we, we took this and divided it by this. Right? It's so easy that it's hard because it's always one. So it goes away. We're almost done. Right? We're almost done. What's, what's the last thing we have to do in this problem to finish? The parameter. Yeah, the, the parameter. 
which is pi over 6. Yeah, this is called the parameter, by the way. That's the value of the parameter, fancy word. So let's plug in. So n of pi over 6 is going to be negative uh, cosine pi over 6, and then negative sine pi over 6. So negative sine pi over 6. I feel like we did this one earlier. Yeah. Did we? It was similar. So sine of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2. So, sine of pi, uh, so cosine of pi over 6 is 1 half. Uh, nah, nah. Cosine is radical 3 over 2. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah, this is the. So it's going to be the big one. Yep. Good. So it's going to be square root of 3 over 2. It's that one. Yep. So it's going to be negative root 3 over 2 or radical 3. And then this one is 1 half. This is the 1 half. Wow. That's it. That's it. Yeah. What's the point of getting the normal and vector? Oh, for now, it's just to find the normal vector. I guess we're going to use it in the next. Uh, well, we won't use it in the next section. No, we won't. Um, but just so you have a normal vector. Yeah. <laughs> Why is your parameter pi over 3? It's like your acceleration vector, huh? Why is the parameter pi over 3? Where? Oh no 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 it's not. I was just I was just I was just checking some trig values. Oh. Yeah, this is how I memorize it, Dane. I'm weak. So I memorize this one, <laughs> and then once I know this one, I know this one's this one. It's the other one. Then I know that can't be that, and then this one has to be. Good, Dane. Okay, that threw me off. No, so you're welcome. It's good. Uh, mm -hmm. wait, that's wrong. What, 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 what? No, 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 wait, wait, wait. No, I dropped, I, dropped, I wrote the wrong thing. I meant to write sine. Uh, sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. Yeah, that's what I meant to write. What, what were you saying, Michael? <laughs> huh? Does that count? Yes. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. Only Michael this time, though. Do you, does anyone have a pen? I have, no, I have one. Michael? Could work. I kind of feel bad, but I don't at the same time. Don't, Michael. It's your grade. It's your life. <laughs> right? I mean, in, in two months, the semester will end. I'll never see you again, but one thing will remain, right? The grade on that transcript, right? <laughs> <laughs> get an A, right? So, like, no, right? I mean, really, right? You, you probably will get an A, but I mean, so make it count. No, it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's true, though. It's true. Yeah. yeah. It sucks to look at it that way. It's like, it's not really. Personal. It's like I'm used to it. I think about it when I burn tests. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I do. Because I keep the finals for a couple semesters, and then every few years, like, I have like a bonfire. Like, oh, so I go through the names. Oh, Joey. Oh, Vanessa. Oh, yeah, I remember her. Because <laughs> I was thinking, if only they knew what I was doing with their tests. Because <laughs> I don't want to throw them away. They say you're not supposed to throw them away or something. I don't know. So, so I have to destroy them. There's a shredder here, but like the, the hole for the shredder is this big. And like it's always full. I have to bring him here, take him out of my car. I mean, I have boxes. I uh, yeah. Stuff. Yeah, I just burn them. It's it's yeah, I burn like stuff. Is, I burn them on my front porch, so like my front lawn. So everyone's like, what's he burning? Any questions? Huh? Oh, is that bad? The, the burning? The... Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> a what? What's a Viking funeral? No, no, no. I don't, I don't have a boat, so. Uh, uh, it's supposed to be a boat. It's supposed to be like a wooden raft, so yeah. it burns too. <laughs> you could probably build a raft the test and then burn it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how long would that really float, though? Like, I'm just it all into the water and sink. Let's try number eight. Let's do number eight. This one's going to be intense. We're really slow here on this one. Thank you, Michael, for noticing that. So, number eight. Number eight. Viking funeral, huh? Number eight. Number eight. This one, I, I, I don't even have the answer to this one in my notes. Like, I'm looking for it in my notes, and it's not even here. That means I probably just, like, gave up, or, or I don't know. It looks really hard. Let's, huh? I said that doesn't bode well for us. It doesn't. Let's, let's try it. I know six is really hard, but I figured I'll leave that one to you. Eight looks worse, so let's try this one. Six just has a quotient rule, but this one, I don't know what's going on here. Like, let's see. Plus e to the tj hat. And what's the last piece? Plus e to the negative. T equals zero. Oh, that's good. Okay. And then what's n? Yeah. Okay. Find the principal unit normal vector to the curve at the specified value 
of the parameter. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, that I have it memorized? Yeah. I, saw, I looked at it. Uh, oh, I can see it from here. Yeah, I have pretty good vision. Yeah, I have glasses, but they make me see worse. Okay, solution. When I first started working here, I got vision insurance. It was like $6 a month. I'm like, oh, I should use it. So like, I went to the eye doctor. I'm like, I think I need glasses. No, I really do. And I convinced him that I needed them. And then I don't have vision insurance anymore, but I have the glasses. Let's take the derivative of this. So the derivative of the square root of 2 times t would just be square root of square root of 2. I'm going to put it in component form. What's the derivative of e to the t? e to the t. e to the t. Yeah, absolutely. That's beautiful, e to the t. And what number are we going to get out front when we take this derivative? Negative. negative yeah. Negative. Beautiful. It's because of the chain rule, right? It's e to the negative t times the derivative of the inside function, which is negative t. Its derivative is negative 1. So, okay. So now we do have to find the magnitude of this. And again, I, I, I don't know how hard this problem is going to be, so I'm going to write a little bit smaller than I normally do. Um, for some reason, I don't have it worked out in my notes. So. so we can't plug in the number yet, right? Because we're looking for n. So just as re to refresh your memory, um, t of t, I'm not going to put the arrows, is r prime over the magnitude of r prime. And then n of t is t prime over the magnitude of t prime. Okay, so. And again, there's a formula sheet. If you, if you came in late, no worries. During the break, I'll give you the formula sheet so you can, you, know, you can use it during the test and stuff. So. so if you just plug in the number now, you can't compute this because you have to compute the derivative of this. So you have to keep it like as a function of t. Okay. All right. So let's find the magnitude of this. So you just square each of the components. Um, let's try it. So it would be the square root of, uh, I'll write it out, square root of 2 squared plus. Uh, oh, oh, I think, I think this is going to turn into something that factors. Like, I think, it, I think this is going to end up with like, I think we're going to get something like this. Right? Right? Because that way, when you take the square root of stuff squared, what do you get? Stuff. stuff. And that's what we need in this problem. We need some stuff. So this, this is gonna, it's going to happen, I think. Why? Because it's a math class. Huh? Approved actual math. It is. No, it's real. Yeah. I had a teacher, and, and he would write this on the board. He would do that, like, plus junk. And it made it seem so much easier. Let me tell you, he was really good. So you square this, and he was like this tall. Um, it's awesome. Square this. When you square this, what do you do with the 2 and the t? You just multiply them, right? 2t. Two t. Yeah, e to the 2t. Plus e to the negative 2t. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So here's where the magic happens. This is actually equal to e to the t plus e to the negative t squared. How do you know that? Because I do. Uh, practice. Let's check it. See, because I knew, I, I just knew something should happen. We're going to the hyperbolic function. Oh, it is? A, oh, it's pretty deep. That's too, yeah, that's pretty deep. We'll talk about, yeah, so she's noticing that that's pretty deep. So if you multiply by 2, you get 2 cosinh t. So this is actually 2 hyperbolic cosine of t. No one's ever noticed that. It's good. It's deep. Let's check this. If you square this one, you get this. If you square this one, you get this. And the formula to multiply these out, I don't know if you remember. Two times the first one, times the second one. Yes, Raphael. Two times the first one times the second one. Very good. So it's two times this times this. But what happens when you multiply these? They cancel, right? So you, get, so you just get two. Right? So you square the first one. This times this is one times two is just two. Square the last one, you get that. That's why I factoring. Yeah, um, yeah, it's all right. So e to the t. <laughs> I'm not, not green, but I, I'm, not, I'm not super powerful at it. I think the hardest factoring is in that class, uh, Intermediate Algebra. I haven't taught that in years. They do some crazy stuff in that class. Anyone ever take that class? Anyone ever take it? Intermediate? Yeah, me too. Yeah, good. I took the one before it. Uh huh? Yeah. Well, I, I got an A. I got 100 on my first test. Just remember. Memories. <laughs> huh? I did. Yeah. No, no, I don't think, I don't know. No, I don't think that deep. Oh, yeah. No, no, uh-uh, no. 
<laughs> I'm not that good, no. Okay, so now, now we have to find t. Now, I don't, I don't think that far ahead. So if r prime over the magnitude uh, of, of this, so basically we have to divide each of these guys by, by that. Mm -hmm. So t of t, so it'll be angle bracket, square root of 2, e to the t plus e to the negative t, comma, and then e to the t over that. I have some ideas. They're not very good ideas, but they're ideas nonetheless. And then this one, yeah, this is going to be a lot of work. It begins. Mm, ridiculous. So that's T. I know, 6 is worse because it has a nastier quotient rule that with the square root. But this one is two quotient rules, so maybe this one's worse. It's just a matter of... the one we didn't do? Hmm? Since it's the one we didn't the do? The one I didn't do in my notes, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think I did it, and maybe I did it wrong or something, and I'm like, ah, forget this, and I threw it away. And then so I just never redid it. And I'm like, ah, oh, I'll just do it in class. And then, so we're doing it in class. Yeah? Is it, is there, is it possible, like, if there was a way to write all of that under one fraction? You can, but you still have to take the derivative of it, so you want to write it like this. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. You can. But you want to differentiate it though, so. So you print. Oh yeah, yeah. But you want to write it like this though, because we have to we have to find the derivative now. So. <laughs> so. So we have to find the derivative. So t prime. But you can write it under one fraction if you want to. Um, yeah. Oh, before we find the derivative though, before we do that. Let me just emphasize something here. So for this one, we're going to use a quotient rule. For this one, we're going to use a quotient rule. For this one, we're going to bring it up, okay, and, and, and take the derivative because there's a, there's a constant here. So whenever there's a constant in the numerator, avoid the quotient rule. You can use the quotient rule if you want to, but let's, let's be a little more pro than that. So I'm going to write it again. So t of t, more writing. So square root of 2, parentheses, e to the t plus e to the negative t to the negative 1. And then I'm going to keep these. I know it's a lot of writing. But it's okay. It builds character and it's good for us. Alright, it's good. Okay, so now we're gonna now now everything is ready to differentiate. That's a negative one because this is really to the one, and when you bring it up it becomes a negative one. Right? It becomes a negative one. So now we're going to differentiate. And everyone understand why we can't plug in the number yet? Because we have to differentiate. Right? We, have to find, we have to find t prime. That's the unfortunate thing about these problems with the n's. The ones with the t's are really easy because you just take the derivative, plug in the number. But these, ugh, that's why there's only eight homework problems. There were some that were just like computationally, like you wouldn't want to do them. Human beings don't do them. You need like a, a Wolfram Alpha to do them. So t prime, here we go, it begins. So for this one, we put something to a power, so we put the negative in the front, so we get negative square root of t. It was 2, negative square root of 2. e to the t plus e to the negative t to, to what exponent in this case? Negative 2, very good, Marissa. Times the derivative of the inside. That's, that's the chain rule. Just exactly the same. Well, with a negative. With a negative. Oh, you're so good. Yes. Yes, perfect. Uh. Perfect. Good stuff. Yeah. It's all about. What do we do to find this derivative? What rule? Quotient rule. Yeah, it's the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the Yeah, so think of first and second, top, bottom. So the derivative of the first or the top is e to the t times the bottom, which is e to the t plus e to the negative t. Is it minus or is it plus for the quotient rule? Minus. minus. Yeah, so minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, and let's pull a Rafael by skipping that step. When you take that derivative of the bottom, we know that we're pro, and we automatically get that minus, right? That's the derivative of the bottom, because the derivative of the bottom gives us that minus. Isn't that really fast? Let me go over it again. I wish I had longer arms. The derivative of the first, huh? Oh, like, yeah, super long arms. I know, I wish, yeah. Derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom 1 squared. I love this. This is 
calculos, calculos. Then we gotta do it again, right? Except this time, we're gonna get a negative. Oh, when we take the derivative of the top, it's gonna be a positive, right? Because the, the negatives will cancel. So it'll be derivative of the top times the bottom. It's just the bottom one from the previous one. It's just the bottom squared. Yes, it's always the bottom squared. Times the bottom minus the top. But it's already minus, so it's going to be plus. Times the derivative of the bottom. And let's do what Rafael said. Put that negative sign there. And then and I'll pause here and let you catch up. OK, and I'm going to check it. It's funny, I messed up on the other problems, but I didn't mess up on this one. Makes me feel better. Well, I haven't messed up yet. So at least that's what we think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for this one here, he put the negative in the front, and then you use the chain rule. And then it's two quotient rules. We haven't done much quotient rule in this class. Do you all know the quotient rule? Like, I'm assuming you do. So let me write it like this. It's f over g. Remember this? I'm gonna, I'll erase it in a minute, but it's the derivative of the top. Times, uh, times g minus f g prime over g squared. Some people do it another way. That's fine. You can do it that way. I do it like this because then my product rule matches. Look, the derivative of the first times the second plus the first derivative of the second. Can I do it like g of h? Oh, okay. Okay, so that's quotient and product. Quotient and product. Oh, you, know, you do it that way? Low d high minus high d low? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that works. Yeah. It's one of those. What is it called? Those memory tricks? N mnemonics? Mnemonics? Yeah. It's like never eat sour watermelons, right? So. Any, uh, you never heard that one? No? Northeast, southwest. Never eat sour watermelons, yeah. Soggy waffles. Oh, a little, little higher end. Uh, <laughs> waffles, I mean, that's, you know, waffles are, you know, they're fancy. You know, they have little shapes. And um, Everyone okay with the quotient rule? Any, any questions on the quotient rule? Now we got to plug it. Yeah, what, what number do we have to plug in? Zero. Zero, thank, thankfully, right? So, just plug it in. yeah, let's just plug it in. And I'm, I don't even, I'm not even going to simplify it first. I'm just going to plug in the zero. Yeah, it's a bunch of zeros and ones, and life is good, maybe. Let's see, t prime of zero. T prime of O. Oh. No, it's not O, oh, it's zero, but. Zero. Oh my god, OMG, yes, because this goes to the bottom, right? And this is one minus one, and it's up top. So it's zero. That's beautiful. That was really quick, Rafael. You're so fast, yeah. Because this is going to come downstairs. E to the zero is one. This is one. One minus one is zero, so we get zero. Mm -hmm. ah, feels good. I know, I know. That's how you know you're doing it right. Like, oh yeah, I get zero is one of the answers. I feel like a champion. Ugh. I don't think this not, I don't think this one is zero. Well, so I know that this is gonna be one. One plus one. So it's two. So it's two. So it's two. And then this is one minus one, which is zero. zero. So two minus zero over and this is 1 plus 1, which is 2. 2 squared is 4. So pretty. Cleans up so nice compared to what we've been doing. And then I think something similar will happen at the end here. So it's 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So it's 2. Plus, oh, 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 oh. What's this going to become here? Two. Zero. Because it's one minus one. So yeah, so it's zero. Because the last piece is zero. So two plus zero over and then two squared, which is four. Right, because this is one minus one, which is zero. Right, e to the zero. I love e. Like, it's so good because e, I love zero. And I imagine if it was something worse, like sine of pi over six, and that was everywhere. That would have been horrible. So this is equal to zero. I mean, they can make it like as ridiculous and impossible as they want to, basically. Yes, they can. Yeah, they, and, and they do. Sometimes they do. And that's why, like, again, there's only eight homework problems, because some of them are just, yeah. Like, you never get the right answer because you'd have to, like, 
constant, you constantly make mistakes and not to recompute it over and over. Yeah, and like, and, and like, I mean, this was one quotient rule. Like, imagine if we had to simplify it again and take the derivative again. Like, just, it, just gets, it just gets annoying. Yeah, it just, it just becomes too much for, for people to do. We're almost done. We're almost done. I'm kind of set in the differential. Hmm? Because there was, like, the fifth, uh, fifth order. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And then like I look at the video and then it just skips the whole stuff. Oh, the web assignment video? Yeah, the guy's not really doing the problems. He just, yeah, he just reads it off the solutions manual. Yeah. Use factor by grouping on that one. Yeah, because yeah, it's, I know what you're talking about. But anyways, yeah, factor by grouping. Mm -hmm. What's the next step? What do we have to find? The magnitude. Yes, very good. The magnitude. The magnitude has other names, by the way. It's also called the length. It's also called the norm. N norm, length, magnitude, Eu Euclidean norm, you can, you can call it that. So this is going to be the square root, and then you do 0 squared plus 1 half squared plus 1 half squared. So this is uh, 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. So it's 1 half, square to 1 half. Right? Yeah, one fourth plus one fourth is two fourths. Two fourths is one half, right? Yeah. So um, we have to divide by this. So I'm going to write it like this: it's one over the square root of two, which is square root of two over two. I'm going to rationalize it because Luigi said two. So you can multiply it by square root of two over square root of two. I only did that because I want to make it look pretty. So you can multiply this by square root of 2 over square root of 2 to rationalize to get this. I didn't do that. I just have it memorized. And so the final answer is n of 0. And basically, you're taking this, and you're dividing by the square root of 2 over 2. So when you divide by that, you really multiply by the reciprocal. Yeah. So I'm going to write it. It'll be 2 over root 2, angle bracket. I'll write big so you can see. I know it's hard to see over there. 0, 1 half, 1 half. So that would be distributing this, you would get 0. This times this. No, uh, because we divided. So we're multiplying by the reciprocal. Good. Thank you, Tori. What's Tori, right? No, I'm kidding. Like, like, <laughs> kidding. Like, get the points back. No, no. It's so bad. I'm sorry. It's, yeah, I wish I could, but no, I mean, I don't wish that, but it's just... So this times this is zero. <laughs> Thank you. And then this times this, you just get one over root two, which is square root two over two, using Luigi's method. And then same thing here. And that is the principal unit normal vector. We just, it's a computational thing. So. Anyone like this stuff? A little bit? Yeah. yeah, good. It gets better in the next section. In the next section, you know how when you're driving and you get off on I-4 and it says like 35 miles per hour or 45? So I don't know if this is true, but my physics teacher told me that it has to do with what we're doing in the next section. So, Like it, it measures how sharply the curve bends. It's called curvature. Point of curvature? Hmm? Curv point of curvature? Yeah, yeah, we're going to look at curvature. Yeah, we'll talk about, we're going to talk a lot about curvature next time. Yep. And then and, and after we break. So any, any questions on this stuff? All right, let's take, take 15 minutes.